The video you are about to watch is the class lecture for this English 8 assignment. Treat it as you would any lecture by paying attention, following directions, and taking notes. But this is better than a lecture. You can pause the video to catch up with notes, review something that you missed, or refer to other files on your computer. Remember that you are accountable for all material in this video. Today's lecture continues to discuss the speech analysis report and we are talking about the biggest section of the report, which is the analysis section. So let's learn how to write the analysis. This section of the paper will discuss how the speaker uses two rhetorical devices to create or emphasize the meaning of the speech. And that means that this refers to the rhetorical devices that you have been learning about through class discussion of other speeches. And we'll put those into play. This is the biggest section of the paper and includes the most steps. Once again, you have a model example of the speech at the Brandenburg Gate by President Ronald Reagan. You have access to a clean copy of that as well as one with Google Comments. So treat those Google Comments as notes that you can refer to either during this video or after this video to help you understand how to write this step by step. The analysis section can be the most challenging and sophisticated of all the sections, but this video will detail how you can accomplish this section by going step by step. This is a series of discrete tasks, and each one is fairly simple. Just take them one at a time, and your section will be excellent. Let's start with the first step on the analysis section, and that is to begin with the purpose. The purpose means the purpose of the speech. You must remind me of what you discussed in the introduction, which was the purpose of the speaker at that time and place giving that speech. Let's take a look at the model example. In his speech at the Brandenburg Gate, President Reagan wants his audience to feel unified in their opposition to the Soviet Union. He wishes for every listener to feel that the allied nations in the West are free and devoted to peace, whereas the Soviets and their allies are tyrannical and devoted to war. If you look at these couple of sentences, you will find that they should remind you of the final sentences of my introduction, where I said, in his speech, Reagan sought to unify Western nations against the Soviets and pressure Gorbachev to open his nation to the West. That idea of unification is back here. The idea of opposition against the Soviets is back here. So I have begun by reminding and adding a little bit of detail and flavor to the purpose of the speech that I ended my introduction section with. It should be easy because this is primarily repetition. Let's go to the next step. After I have stated the purpose, I should follow with the rhetorical devices connected to that purpose. Remember that this section focuses on the two rhetorical devices. So after I've reminded my reader of the purpose, I should introduce the rhetorical devices that I will discuss in this section. Again, let's return to the model example. The final sentence of my first paragraph states that Reagan does this through intentional shifts in voice and repetition of key words. I've identified two rhetorical devices in this sentence, voice shifts and repetition. This is something of a thesis statement for this section of the paper. It tells my reader which two devices I will explore when I'm analyzing Reagan's speaking in this particular speech. Notice that the connection of purpose and rhetorical devices composes my first paragraph. So once you've matched those two, you should have written a decent sized paragraph and it's time to break to your first um, development paragraph. And let's talk about how that development paragraph will begin. You should use simple transitions throughout the paper. You will be dealing with two different rhetorical devices, multiple pieces of evidence, and transitions will be very important. So when you look at my model example, you will see that I began with the word first. And you'll see also that in my second paragraph, I begin with the word second. We're not looking for sophisticated or complex transition material here. Just practice using some basic and simple transitions to organize your writing for your reader to make it clear. The next step after a transition is to write a topic sentence that connects the specific device to the purpose. Remember, specific device and purpose have already been established in that first paragraph. 
So just give me a sentence that connects the two. You might ask why I'm doing this because I did it in the introduction paragraph, but look at the model example. First, Reagan shifts his voice to create a sense of unity in the West, especially in opposition to the Soviets. I've connected one rhetorical device to the purpose. Whereas in the introduction, this little paragraph here, I've not specified one of the rhetorical devices. This topic sentence shows my reader that in this paragraph, I will only discuss one rhetorical device, that device being voice shift. So I've given transition, the word first, and I've given a topic sentence for this paragraph that identifies the rhetorical device that I will discuss and what it accomplishes, the purpose, or what some people might call the impact. Once I've established the topic sentence, it's time to provide an example, and uh, that's from the speech, of course. It can be either quotation or paraphrase. Now, I tend to like quotations, so you'll see a few of them in here, but my analysis section does include paraphrase as well, which is a requirement of this section if you look back at the details of the assignment. So let's look at my first example. I'll read from the beginning. First, Reagan shifts his voice to create a sense of unity in the West, especially in opposition to the Soviets. He begins with a first-person voice that makes him seem like a personal, caring individual. He says, you see, like so many presidents before me, I come here today because wherever I go, whatever I do, ich habe noch eine Koffer in Berlin. This first-person voice makes him seem like an ordinary, sensitive man. These sentences provide one example and explain how that example accomplishes the purpose that I established in the topic sentence. Writing like this is about establishing a pattern and then repeating. I have said in my topic sentence that I will talk about voice shifts connected to a sense of unity. Here I'm talking about a, a particular use of voice connected to a particular positive feeling. How Reagan is an ordinary sensitive man making him attractive, making him comfortable, making the listener in Berlin want to like him and want to be with him, and that connects to the unity idea. So I've given my first example. I've introduced it, he says, I've quoted it using proper punctuation techniques, and that's an example of first-person voice. I've identified it as such. Let's go to the next step. And that's to use a transition into the next example. This should be pretty simple, and I've used a simple transition. That transition is the word later. Later, he changes this first-person singular voice to a first-person plural voice. Once again, I don't need to use anything fancy or sophisticated, just a simple transition that indicates to the reader that we're moving to a different part of the speech. After I've used that transition, it's time to, oops, sorry, went too far. It's time to actually give that next example, and that example is right here after the later. Later, he changes this first-person singular voice to a first-person plural voice. When Reagan says, we in the West stand ready to cooperate with the East to promote true openness, to break down barriers that separate people, to create a safe, freer world, he is joining his personal nature to his audiences. He makes them feel unified. This section provides another quotation for an example and shows the shift and connects it to the purpose, unification. Two examples, both dealing with voice, showing the shift, and that's all I need to do to provide the evidence. Finally, I provide a concluding statement for this paragraph. Remember, you should not end with specific evidence, you end with a general concluding statement. And looking at mine, he and the people of Berlin are one and ready to fight the Soviets. My concluding sentence focuses on the purpose, the unity idea, but it doesn't use the word unity. It simply discusses it in different terms, saying they are one. This is a conclusion because it restates the topic of the paragraph. I understand that that may have been a little bit fast and a little bit confusing, so let me go over this again and then I'll look at the next paragraph to give an example. Let's go back through the list. 
I begin with the purpose. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back to the beginning of this paragraph. I begin with a simple transition. That transition in this paragraph is first. Then I give a topic sentence connecting the device in this paragraph, that's the voice, to the purpose, which is unity. I give my first example. I give a transition into the next example. And then I conclude. If you follow this format, you'll see that you can do this for both paragraphs, which is why the last step is to repeat. Let's take a look at the next paragraph in the model example and see how I've repeated the structure. Second, Reagan makes his audience feel pride and devotion to the West through repetition of favor favorable words, especially freedom. I've used a simple transition, that word second, and then here's a topic sentence which includes repetition as my device and pride and devotion as my purpose. He wants them to feel pride and devotion. Once again, positive emotions. And he does this through repeating favorable words. My first example, R Reagan used the word freedom in connection to the West 17 times as a paraphrase. It's not direct quotation. This evidence gives a summary of the speech in a way that it doesn't give quotation. Just talking about the repetition of freedom for 17 times. I've used a simple transition, the word for instance, into yet another piece of evidence, one that gives the word freedom, and then another example of freedom. Two examples of freedom to support my repetition claim. Then I have another example when he's talking about the same concepts with synonyms using words like liberty and openness, another transition, for instance, and then another example. This follows a pattern. Transition, example, transition, example, all of them related to the topic sentence. This repetition of inspiring words makes the listener feel pride and belonging in the West. The concluding statement is the same as the paragraph above. It simply restates the purpose and shows how Reagan has accomplished that purpose. So moving back to the basic structure. In the first paragraph, you begin with the purpose that you've already established in the introduction. And you follow that with the devices, both devices connected to the purpose. This gives your first paragraph. It establishes your idea for the entire analysis section. In the second paragraph, you use a simple transition and you give the topic sentence that connects the one device to the purpose, showing what you'll talk about in that paragraph. You'll give an example from evidence, you'll transition into the next example, you'll write a concluding statement, and then you'll repeat it for the third paragraph. Thus, you have analyzed the speech with two rhetorical devices, at least two pieces of evidence for each rhetorical device, and this flows smoothly. There should be no unnecessary language within this section. Everything should have a purpose, and you should have no problem reaching the word requirement. Again, if this is confusing at all to you or unclear, feel free to take a look at the Google document with the comments attached. That may help with some notes. But of course, you'll bring this information to class time. And during class, we will answer questions and have a discussion and take a look at your rough draft. So I and peers can help you with shaping that dra rough draft into an excellent um, speech analysis report.